Hello, um, good evening. Um, we're going to finish, uh, reading Judges, um, probably, um, finish completely in this episode because, um, we were in Samson and we were toward the end of Samson. Verse 10, chapter 16, verse 10. And there are only 21 chapters in Judges, so we will probably finish um, Judges in this episode. And then the remainder of the videos for tonight will be the Book of Ruth, which is a good, well, they're all good. So we will continue that now. Um... Judges chapter 16 verse 10 is where we are okay <clears throat> oh let's pray Lord I thank you for this day um I thank you for um a good day at work um I thank you for a successful day um i thank you for keeping helping me keep my mind on you and redirecting me um where it wasn't and helping me to rebuke you know just thoughts that weren't of you, negative thoughts, and the like. Lord, I just thank you so much for helping me like you have. I just thank you so much for helping me with my inside. You can reach things that I cannot and so I thank you for helping me with my inside Lord I ask you to be with me as I read I ask you to help me to read clearly um I ask you to help me to focus um as I read and I ask you to help me to be relaxed and calm as I read and I thank you so much and I thank you for peace. I thank you for peace. And I thank you for prayer. I thank you for prayer. And your love. And your kindness and grace. And your faithfulness and patience. I thank you for that, Lord Jesus. And I thank you that I can call your name. Jesus. Christ my Savior I thank you for the blood I thank you for holding my hand you know when I pray and when I'm reading or listening to your word I just thank you so much in Jesus name thank God amen okay <clears throat> Um, then Delilah said to Samson, behold, you have mocked me and told me lies. Please tell me how you might be bound. And he said to her, if they bind me with a few ropes that have not been used, then I shall become weak and be like any other man. So Delilah took new ropes and bound him with them and said to him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. And the men lying in ambush were in an inner chamber. But he snapped the ropes off his arms like a thread. Then Delilah said to Samson, Until now you have mocked me and told me lies. Tell me how you might be bound. And he said to her, if you weave the seven locks of my head with the web and fasten it tight with a pen, then I shall become weak 
and be like any other man. So while he slept, Delilah took the seven locks of his head and wove them into the web, and she made them tight with the pin and said to him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. But he awoke from his sleep and pulled away the pin, the loom, and the web. And she said to him, How can you say you I love you when your heart is not with me? You have mocked me these three times, and you have told me where your and you have not told me where your great strength lies. And when she pressed him hard with her words, day after day, and urged him, his soul was vexed to death. And he told her all his heart, and said to her, A razor has never come upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb. If my head is shaved, then my strength will leave me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. Then Delilah saw that he had told when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called the Lord to the Philistines and said, Come up again, for he has told me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up to her and brought the money in their hands. She made him sleep on her knees, and she called a man and had him shave off the seven locks of his head. Then she began to torment him, and his strength left him. And she said, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. And he awoke from his sleep and said, I will go out as at other, as at other times and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had left him. And the Philistines seized him and gouged out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with bronze shackles. And he, and he ground at the mill in the prison. But the hair of his head began to grow again after it had been shaved. The Death of Samson now the lords of the Philistines gathered to offer a great sacrifice to Dagon, their god, and to rejoice. And they said, Our god has given Samson, our enemy, into our hand. And when the people saw him, they promised their god. For they said, Our god has given our enemy into our hand the ravenger of our country who has killed many of us and when their hearts were merry they said call samson that he may entertain us so they called samson out of the prison and he entertained them they made him stand between the pillars and samson said to the young man who held him by the hand let me fill the pillars on which the house rests, that I may lean against them. Now the house was full of men and women. All the lords of the Philistines were there, and on the roof there were about three hundred men and women who looked on while Samson entertained. Then Samson called to the Lord and said, O oh Lord God, please remember me and please strengthen me only this once. O oh God, that I may be avenged on the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson grasped the two middle pillars on which the house rested, and he leaned his weight against them, his right hand on the one and his left hand on the other. And Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. Then he bowed with all his strength, and the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people who were in it. So the dead whom he killed at his death were more than those whom he had killed during his life. Then his brothers and all his family came down and took him and brought him up and buried him between Zorah and Eshtoal in the tomb of Manoah, his father. 
He had judged Israel 20 years. Micah and the Levite. There was a man of the hill country of Ephraim whose name was Micah. And he said to his mother, the 1,100 pieces of silver that were taken from you about which you uttered a curse and also spoke it in my ears, behold, the silver is with me, I took it. And his mother said, blessed be my son by the Lord. And he restored the 1,100 pieces of silver to his mother. And his mother said, I dedicated the silver to the Lord from my hand for my son to make a carved image and a metal image. Now, therefore, I will restore it to you. So when he restored the money to his mother, his mother took 200 pieces of silver and gave it to the silversmith who made it into a carved image and a metal image. And it was in the house of Micah and the man Micah had a shrine. And he made an ephod and household gods and ordained one of his sons who became his priest. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. Now there was a young man of Bethlehem in Judah, of the family of Judah, who was a Levite. And he sojourned there. And the man departed from the town of Bethlehem in Judah to sojourn where he could find a place. And as he journeyed, he came to the hill country of Ephraim to the house of Micah. And Micah said to him, where do you come from? And he said to him, I am a Levite of the Bethlehem of Bethlehem in Judah, and I'm going to sojourn where I may find a place. And Micah said to him, stay with me and be to me a father and, and a priest. And I will give you 10 pieces of silver a year and a suit of clothes and your living. And the Levite went in and the Levite was content, was content to dwell with the man. And the young man became to him like one of his sons. And Micah ordained the Levite and the young man became his priest and was in the house of Micah. Then Micah said, Now I know that the Lord will prosper me because I have a Levite as priest. Danites take the Levite and the idol. In those days there was no king in Israel. And in those days the tribe of the people of Dan was seeking for itself an inheritance to dwell in, for until then no inheritance among the tribes of Israel had fallen to them. So the people of Dan sent five able men, able men from the whole number of their tribe, from Zorah and from Eshtol, to spy out the land and to explore it. And they said to them, go and explore the land and they came to the hill country of Ephraim, to the house of Micah, and lodged there. When they were by the house of Micah, they recognized the voice of the young Levite. And they turned aside and said to him, Who brought you here? What are you doing in this place? What is your business here? And he said to them, This is how Micah dealt with me. He has hired me, and I have become his priest. And they said to him, Inquire of God, please, that we may know whether the journey of which we are setting out will succeed. And the priest said to them, Go in peace. The journey on which you go is under the eye of the Lord. Then the five men departed and came to Laish and saw the people who were there, how they lived in security after the manner after the manner of the Sidonians, quiet and unexpecting, lacking nothing that is in the earth and possessing wealth, and how they were far from the Sidonians and had no dealings with anyone. And when they came to their brothers at the at Zora in Eshtal, 
Their brothers said to them, What do you report? They said, Arise, and let us go up against them, for we have seen the land, and behold, it is very good. And will you do nothing? Do not be slow to go, to enter in and possess the land. As soon as you go, you will come to an unsuspecting people. The land is spacious, for God has given it into, our, into your hands, a place where there is no lack of anything that is in the earth. So 600 men of the tribe of Dan, armed with weapons of war, set out from Zora and Eshtal and went up in an encamped at Kiriath-Jerim in Judah. On this account, that place is called Mahan Mahanadan to this day. Behold, it is west of Kiriath-Jerim, and they passed on from there to the hill country of Ephraim and came to the house of Micah. Then the five men who had gone to scout out the country of Laish said to their brothers, Do you know that in these houses there are an ephod, household gods, a carved image, and a metal image? Now therefore consider what you will do. And they turned aside there and came to the house of the young Levite at the home of Micah and asked him about his welfare. Now the 600 men of the Danites armed with their weapons of war stood by the entrance of the gate and the five men who had gone to scout out the land went up and entered and took the carved image, the ephod, the household gods, and the metal image while the priests stood by the entrance of the gate with the 600 men armed with weapons of war. And when these went into Micah's house and took the carved image, the ephod, the household gods, and the, metal, and the metal image, the priest said to them, What are you doing? And they said to him, Keep quiet, put your hand on your mouth, and come with us and be to us a father and a priest. Is it better for you to be priest to the house of one man or to be priest to a tribe and clan in Israel? And the priest's heart was glad. He took the ephod and the household gods and the carved image and went along with the people. So they turned and departed, putting the little ones and the livestock and the goods in front of them. When they had gone a distance from the home of Micah, the men who were in the houses near Micah's house were called out, and they overtook the people of Dan, and they shouted to the people of Dan, who turned around and said to Micah, What is the matter with you that, the, that you come with such a company? And he said, You take my gods that I made and the priest and go away, and what have I left? How then do you ask me, what is, the matter, what is the matter with you? And the people of Dan said to him, Do not let your voice be heard among us, lest angry fellows fall upon you, and you lose your life with the lives of your household. Then the people of Dan went their way. And when Micah saw that they were too strong for him, he turned and went back to his home. But the people of Dan took what my what Micah had made and the priest who belonged to him and they came to Laish to a people quiet and unsuspecting and struck them with the edge of the sword and burnt the city with fire and there was no deliverer because it was far from Sidon and they had no dealings with anyone it was in the valley that belongs to Beth Rehob then they rebuilt the city and lived in it and they named the city Dan after the name of their ancestor, who was born to Israel. But the name of the city was Laish at the first. And the people of Dan set up the carved image for themselves. And Jonathan, the son of Gershom, son of Moses, and his sons were priests 
to the tribe of the Danites until the day of the captivity of the land. So they set up Micah's carved image that he made as long as the house of God was at Shiloh. A Levite and his concubine, chapter 19. Okay. So in those days, sorry. Okay. So in those days, when there was no king in Israel, a certain Levite was sojourning in the remote parts of the hill country of Ephraim, who took to himself a concubine from Bethlehem in Judah, and his concubine was unfaithful to him, and she went away from him to her father's house at Bethlehem in Judah, and was there some four months. Then her husband arose and went after her to speak kindly to her and bring her back. He had with him his servant and a couple of donkeys, and she brought him into her father's house. And when the girl's father saw him, he came with joy to meet him, and his father-in-law, the girl's father, made him stay, and he remained with him three days. So they ate and drank and spent the night there. And on the fourth day, they arose early in the morning, and he prepared to go. But the girl's father said to his son-in-law, <coughs> Excuse me, strengthen your heart with a morsel of bread, and after that you may go. So the two of them sat and ate and drank together. And the girl's father said to the man, Be pleased to spend the night, and let your heart be merry. And when the man rose up to go, his father-in-law pressed him till he spent the night there again. And on the fifth day, he rose early in the morning to depart. And the girl's father said, Strengthen your heart and wait until the day declines. So they ate, both of them. And when the man and his concubine and his servant rose up to depart, his father-in-law, the girl's father, said to him, Behold, now the day was wa has waned toward evening. Please spend the night. Behold, the day draws to its close. Lie cheer and let your heart be merry, and tomorrow you shall arise early in the morning for your journey and go home. But the man would not spend the night. He rose up and departed and arrived opposite Jabez, that is Jerusalem. He had with him a couple of saddled donkeys, and his concubine was with him. When they were near Jabez, the day was nearly over, and the servant said to his master, Come now, let us turn aside to this city of the Jebusites and spend the night in it. And his master said to him, We will not turn aside into the city of foreigners <clears throat> who do not belong to the people of Israel, but we will pass on to Gebe and be and he said to his young man, Come and let us draw nearer to one of these parcels and spend the night at Gebe or at Rama. So they passed on and went their way, and the sun went down on them near Gebe, which belongs to Benjamin, and they turned aside and they turned aside there to go in and spend the night at Gebe. And he went in and sat down in the open square of the city for no one took them into his house to spend the night and behold and behold an old man was coming from his work in the field at evening the man was from the hill country of Ephraim and he was sojourning in Gebe the men of the place were Benjamites and he lifted up his eyes and saw the traveler in the open square of the city. And the old man said, Where are you going? And where do you come from? And he said to him, We are passing from Bethlehem and Judah to the remote parts of the hill country of Ephraim, from which I come. I went to Bethlehem and Judah 
and I am going to the house of the Lord, but no one has taken me into his house. We have straw and feed for our donkeys with bread and wine for me and your female servant and the young man with their servants. There is no lack of anything. And the old man said, Peace be to you. I will care for all your wants. Only do not spend the night in the square. So he brought him into his house and gave the donkeys feed. And they washed their feet and ate and drank. Uh, Gibe's crying. As they were making their hearts merry, behold, the men of the city, worthless fellows, surrounded the house, beating on the door, and they said to the old man, The master of the house, bring out the man who came into your house, that we may know him. And the man, the master of the house, went out to them and said to them, no, my brothers, do not act so wickedly. Since this man has come into my house, do not do this vile thing. Behold, here are my virgin daughter and his concubine. Let me bring them out now. Violate them and do with them what seems good to you. But against this man, do not do this outrageous thing. But the men would not listen to him. So the man seized his concubine and made her go out to them. And they knew her and abused her all night until the morning. And as the dawn began to break, they let her go. And as morning appeared, the woman came and fell down at the door of the man's house where her master was until it was light. And her master rose up in the morning, and when he opened the doors of the house and went out to go on his way, behold, there was his concubine lying at the door of the house with her hands on the threshold. He said to her, get up, let us be going. But there was no answer. Then he put her on the donkey, and the man rose up and went away to his home. And when he entreated his house, and when he entered his house, he took a knife, and taking hold of his concubine, he divided her limb by limb into twelve pieces, and sent her throughout all the territory of Jerusalem. And all who saw it said, such a thing has never happened or been seen from the day that the people of Israel came up out of the land of Egypt until this day. Consider it, take counsel, and speak. Israel's war with the tribe of Benjamin. This is chapter 20. Then all the people of Israel came out from Dan to Beersheba, including the land of Gilead, and the congregation assembled as one man to the Lord at Mizpah, and the chiefs of all the people of all the tribes of Israel presented themselves in the assembly of the people of God, 400,000 men on foot, that drew the sword. Now the people of Benjamin heard that the people of Israel had gone up to Mizpah. And the people of Israel said, Tell us, how did this evil happen? And the Levite, the husband of the woman who was murdered, answered and said, I came to Gibba that belongs to Benjamin, I and my concubine, to spend the night. And the leaders of Gibba rose against me and surrounded the house against me by night. They meant to kill me, and they violated my concubine, and she is dead. So I took hold of my concubine and cut her in pieces and sent her throughout all the country 
of the inheritance of Israel, for they have committed abomination and outrage in Israel. Behold, you people of Israel, all of you, give your advice and counsel here. And all the people arose as one man, saying, None of us will go to his tent, and none of us will return to his house. But now this is what we will do to Gil to Gilba. We will go up against it by lot, and we will take ten men of a hundred throughout all the tribes of Israel. And a hundred of a thousand, and a thousand of ten thousand, to bring provisions for the people. That when they come, they may repay Gibba of Benjamin for all the outrage that they have committed in Israel. So all the men of Israel gathered against the city, united as one man. And the tribe of Israel sent men through all the tribe of Benjamin, saying, What evil is this that has taken place among you? Now therefore give up the men, the worthless fellows in Gilba, that we may put them to death and purge evil from Israel. But the Benjamites would not listen to the voice of their brothers, the people of Israel. Then the people of Benjamin came together out of the cities of Gilba, to go out to battle against the people of Israel. And the people of Benjamin mustered out of their cities on that day 26,000 men who drew the sword besides the inhabitants of Gebe, who mustered 700 chosen men. Among all those were 700 chosen men who were left-handed. Everyone could sling a stone at a hair and not miss. And the men of Israel, apart from Benjamin, mustered 400,000 men who drew the sword. All these were men of war. The people of Israel arose and went up to Bethel and inquired of God, who shall go up first for us to fight against the people of Benjamin? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up first. Then the people of Israel rose in the morning and encamped against Gebe. And the men of Israel went out to fight against Benjamin. And the men of Israel drew up the battle line against them at Gebe. The people of Benjamin came out of Gebe and destroyed on that day 22,000 men of the Israelites. But the people, the men of Israel, took courage and again formed the battle line in the same place where they had formed it on the first day. And the people of Israel went up and wept before the Lord until the evening. And they inquired of the Lord, Shall we again draw near to fight against our brothers, the people of Benjamin? And the Lord said, Go up against them. So the people of Israel came near against the people of Benjamin the second day. And Benjamin went against them out of Gibeah the second day and destroyed 18,000 men of the people of Israel. All these were men who drew the sword. Then all the people of Israel, the whole army, went up and came to Bethel and wept. They sat there before the Lord and fasted that day until evening and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. And the people of Israel inquired of the Lord, for the Ark of the Covenant of God was there in those days, and Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, son of Aaron, ministered before it in those days, saying, Shall we go out once more to battle against our brothers, the people of Benjamin, or shall we cease? And the Lord said, Go up, for tomorrow I will give them into your hand. So Israel set men in ambush.
ambush around Gebe. And the people of Israel went up against the people of Benjamin on the third day, and they themselves in array against Gebe as at other times. And the people of Benjamin and set themselves in array against Gebe as, as at other times. And the people of Benjamin went out against the people and were drawn away from the city. And, at, and as at other times, oh, I'm sorry. we have to stop. We're at 35 minutes. I didn't know we were over. 